Brendan Rogers, is he going to be here for the long term? Is he building a Celtic legacy? In my opinion, yes. We'll speak about that in this video. We're going to talk about the Champions League, the Champions League draw, and who we play after the Champions League games. Uh, we're going to take a look at that. We're going to talk about the legacy. Yes, I spoke about the legacy that Brendan Rodgers is building, and I think that when you look back at some of the things that he's said over the last couple of months, we're going to talk about Jota. Jota wants to return to Celtic, and the big man, Cameron Carter-Vickers. He also played for the United States last night. First of all, let's look at the Champions League draw. We will look at the Champions League draw, and um, the, the important games. Yesterday, seen us bring out the fixtures for the season. But who do we play right after the Champions League games is one of the questions that will be asked by many, many Celtic fans. So I have done the business for you. I've went on to UEFA.com to look at the dates. And in this video, we're going to jump back and forward from UEFA.com and CelticFC.com and look at the special dates. So the first match, day one of the Champions League, is the 17th. 17th to the 19th of September. 17th to the 19th of September, which means beforehand we have Hearts at home and then we're playing the Champions League. And then there'll be the international break and we're not back until the 28th of September, which is okay. But then the next Champions League match is match day two. is on the 1st and 2nd of October. So who do we play around about that time? Well, we've got an away game to Ross County on the 5th of September. September. So we're away. We're away to St. Johnston before the Champions League game. And then we have the Champions League game in midweek. And then the weekend after, we're also away to Ross County. Will there be a hangover from any of the Celtic players? There'll be certainly hangovers from the Celtic fans if it's an away game in the Champions League and uh, game day two. If it's an away game in the Champions League game day two, it said uh, you're then going to have to come back and then get the bus up to Ross County. That fan fantastic away trip. It is the best away trip in Scottish football. Celtic fans, some Celtic fans will say it's a shite, it's a way up there. But the ones that go to the games know it's a fantastic trip because you get a good old bevy and you can get up and get to that train station and get a pint in before the game. Anyway, who do we play after game day three in the Champions League? Match day three is on the 22nd and 23rd of October uh, after the international break. 23rd and 22nd and 23rd of October, which means that we're away again. We're at home to Aberdeen before the Champions League, a hard game. Aberdeen at home is always a tidy game, that. And then after it, we are away to Fir Park. It's just along the road from Celtic Park. Uh, it's only about 20 minutes drive, but uh, it is another away game right after the Champions League. So let's hope that there's no hangover after the Champions League. And I think that'll probably be a home game, which means that you'll get it home. Well, here's hoping. We'll wait and see what the draw pulls out. But after it, we are away to Motherwell. So that takes us to match day five. Match day five will be on the 5th and 6th of November. Build a bonfire, build a bonfire, put the rangers on the top, put the jambos in the middle, and you know the rest of the song. Anyway, the 5th and 6th of November. And uh, Celtic uh, are at home to Dundee United. Then we're away to Kilmarnock. Away to Kilmarnock after the Champions League game is probably one of the worst games that you could think of. Um, Kilmarnock uh, beat us a couple of times last season. Will we avenge them and beat them every game this season? Well, Brendan Rodgers and the boys will need to make sure because they have an away game. And don't worry, it's showing you these games at four o'clock. That's because I'm in, I am in Europe. I'm not in the UK. So it'll be showing them an hour before everyone starts freaking out and going, what fucking games at four o'clock for? Yeah, fucking bitch, man. Fucking you did, you stupid cunt. Uh, which generally happens on the channel sometimes. Anyway, match day five is the 26th and 27th of November. 26th and 27th of November. And we are away to Hearts before that game. But right before it, right after it, should I say, we're at home at last to Ross County. Ross County at home. And a three o'clock kickoff at Celtic Park, four o'clock European, Central European time. So then it takes us into December, the 10th and 11th of December. 10th and 11th of December is match day six in the Champions League. And we will be at home to Hibernian, but then we'll be away to Dundee. We're getting an awful lot of away games after the Champions League draw. Isn't helping us out at all, but then um, we're away. We're at home to Hibernian before the Champions League. 
and then we're away after it. So it doesn't give us any kind of advantage. But then again, sometimes after the Champions League, fans can be a little bit fickle and, and get on the back of the team. So it's maybe looking at it, it's maybe good that we're away from home so much after the Champions League because if it's been a bad result in Europe, you know, the home fans can sometimes get on the back of the team. The away fans, on the other hand, they'll start singing for the very first minute of away games, as they always do. Uh, they might give the team a little bit of stick, but there's one thing that's for sure, the away fans at Celtic are the bread and butter of Celtic Football Club when it comes to home and away in Scottish football and Europe. Because I know a lot of guys that still do it week in, week out, and they spend a hell of a lot of money doing so. And then takes us to being in Europe after Christmas. <laughs> Something that's been a long time coming for Celtic, but the new format, it means that Celtic will be in Europe after Christmas, which is fantastic because there's a chance that you'll have at least one away game after the Christmas period in Europe. And let's hope that you get somewhere in the south of, south of Spain so that we get a nice hot country, a nice, a nice hot bit of weather for the game in January. Anyway, the match day seven is the 21st and 22nd of January. There's no winter break this year, remember. So that takes us, we have a home game straight after it. We're away to Ross County the week before and uh, away to Ross County. And uh, that'll be a three o'clock kickoff. It'll change. All those teams, times will change for TV. But then we are at home at Celtic Park against Dundee. Against Dundee. And then it takes us to match day eight, which is the 29th. And it looks like everyone in the Champions League will play on the same day. Um, to make sure that no one has an advantage going into the knockout rounds. And that is match day eight. You then get another two games in the knockout playoffs if you're above a certain position in the league. So that is that. The Champions League is in its 70th year, 70th season as the elite club competition. And, and uh, it was a long time ago that Celtic won it. Anyway, let's get into some more Celtic news. Celtic, um, obviously, are going to have those trips away to other teams after that. But what about bringing in new players? And transfer speculation has been rife this summer. But John Kennedy yesterday, and it was interesting because I was, I was reading an article from one of the papers down south. And, and they called John Kennedy um, the Celtic chief. Let's all get it. Uh, there's been a lot of conversations. Wait till I get it. There it's there. Adam Eder to Celtic latest. Uh, is Celtic continue to chase Norwich City. Adam Eder after his loan spell with the club. But the deal is not expected to move forward just yet. Hoops chief John Kennedy told Sky Sports. Where's the Hoops chief John Kennedy? Oh, dear. I do love it when... Uh... Anyway, we'll just leave it at that. Um, John Kennedy did go to say yes. He says, I think there's a lot of conversations happening. Um, it's a time when players have been on holiday, and we've seen that. We'll speak about that in a minute, and some of the players that came back, and the last man standing. Um, but there's been a lot of things happening in the background. A lot of conversations have been taking place. We're back for pre-season, and hopefully in the coming weeks, we'll have, things will start to happen. But there's a lot of plates spinning, a lot of work to get done, and hopefully we'll start to see that materialise over the coming weeks. Talking about players and players coming back, obviously yesterday uh, you've seen there's a couple of the young team and there is the one and only Kyogo getting out his Jeep. And Gustav Lagerbelke, Gustav Lagerbelke, sitting with smiles, obviously. It's a time when all the players, you're going back to work and it's all your mates, you know, they're all going to be smiles. There's nobody going, I've never got a new team yet. And those conversations will happen if and when they do happen. But it was interesting to see Gustav Lagerbelke getting smiles for the lads. Kyogo on that, and uh, big Rocky, Nico Kuhn coming in. But the interesting one for me uh, was O, who's obviously back in the building, and uh, he's back in the building. And there's the, Stephen Welsh, and the last man standing, yes, the last man standing, um, Scott Bain. Scott Bain. Yep, <laughs> Scott Bain. We're into pre-season with Scott Bain. It's a situation that we all didn't want to happen. It is a situation that we all didn't want to happen. And Scott Bain is the last man standing. And what is he wearing? Is that an Iron Maiden t-shirt or something? I'm not too sure. His little green bag, his joggies, looking all smiles. I'm the only goalkeeper. Do that, do that. I'm the only goalkeeper. And he wonder if he smiles. He's like, ah. Name this take the number one for me today. <laughs> and then the rest of the team going, all right, Benny, you're actually going to get a game and goals today. 
Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Anyway, Cameron Carter Vickers made uh, an appearance for his country last night in the United States of America, and he almost gave away a penalty in the defeat to Panama. Yeah, Panama, you can talk about Panama all day long, especially uh, that all kind of went brushed under the table, isn't it? The Panama Files, where everyone stuck all their dodgy cash and dodgy paperwork. Anyway, Brendan Rodgers, is he building a legacy at Celtic Park? This is the question in the video. So Brendan Rodgers, for me, his legacy is obviously that Celtic have been linked with a lot of players over the preseason, but they've also been linked with a lot of youth players, something that hasn't happened over the last couple of seasons. One of the things that um, has happened is a lot of youth players have left Celtic, and a lot of people are saying, what is the point of having a youth system when players get to a certain age? Now, Brendan Rodgers spoke about this last season. Brendan Rodgers did speak about this, and he said, look, there's young, young football players this day and age. He says, we've got them here at Celtic that don't believe in a football education. They get to a certain age and they get to a certain point in the B team and they think they should just walk straight into the first team and should be playing first team football. Gone are the days where the likes of Callum McGregor and that went out on loan and, and hence the reason that this is why I think Brendan Rodgers is here for the long haul. There's a lot of you out there who won't like that, but Brendan Rodgers is here for the long haul and he's building his legacy as a manager. And it's not going to be just the legacy on the pitch. It's not going to be about all the trebles that he brings in, the Champions League, the Champions trophies that he brings in. His legacy is going to be building the foundation at Celtic Park, which is the youth system. I think gone are the days where we bring in prospects for two or three million. I think Brendan has looked at that and said, look, we're, we're spending good money on these players coming in and they're not going to be good enough to play for Celtic. Let's change tact let's bring in players at 16 17 18 year old that are going to go into the under 18s the b team and then get them hence the reason that there was a new position made at celtic last season the pathway manager by darno d now when you're bringing in people that you know like and trust and into the the company into the family as brendan is doing he's bringing in johnny hayes as under 18 manager he's bringing in darren d as pathway manager that's people that he know likes and trust in those positions and he knows that they're going to be there for the long term he knows that these aren't people that are just going to jump ship at the first opportunity like what has been offered to john kennedy john kennedy was offered to go down to tottenham last season and he, and he turned that opportunity down he was asked by sky do you regret not going down to tottenham no no they never won anything you win things here at celtic you know he was asked the same question when brendan rogers left are you going to follow brendan brendan offered him a, a pathway down to leicester at the time he said no so celtic are building things in the background and ultimately this will be the legacy that Brendan Rodgers is putting in place. Because you remember the first time that Brendan Rodgers was at Celtic, he had the under-18s, the B team, and the first team all playing the exact same style of football. That still continues to this day. So there's a pathway that players are going to go through from now on that says, if you do this, you do this, you do this, and then you go out on loan or whatever, and you get some game time, and there's a pathway into the first team. So I think that is ultimately what the legacy will be from Brendan Rodgers. Tell me what you think about in the comments. Some people say that a top pitching channel. And I'm saying sometimes or all the time. Anyway, let's move on. Jota. The big news yesterday is Jota, uh, uh, he's been made a, a make weight to get some in fresh talent into the team. There's a couple of players in his Saudi team. Jota, who was sold for £25 million. Now, Adam Eder's situation, if Celtic really want to get the Adam Eder situation over the line, when Brendan Rodgers came into Celtic a year ago, he turned around and says, I'm looking forward to working with Jota because he's a fantastic player. Celtic then sold him from under his feet. The Norwich manager has said that he wants to work, he wants to see Adam Eder in person, first of all. Celtic should just offer them the cash. If that's the player they want, offer them the cash and get the, done, the deal done and dusted. Get the deal done and dusted and just, it doesn't matter what their manager says. If they're a club that needs to sell the exact same as what Celtic are. We all have our place in the pecking order when it comes to finances and, and they're, no, they're just the same as any other club. If Celtic are going to offer six million for the player, make sure that it's on the table and give them a deadline to actually make it, get the deal done and dusted. Anyway, Jota has been saying that he, he, he would love a return to Celtic. Will that happen? No, because he's he's on absolutely crazy money. He did leave for a contract worth ten million a year, which is unbelievable money. I think he's probably looking to get paid off. It was it was only a short term contract, though, was it? Will Celtic be able to get the player on loan? The fact that Tottenham and Newcastle and West Ham have all been linked with Jota, I think he's probably going to end up at one of those teams. Tell me what you think about it in the comment section. Would you like to see Jota back at Celtic Park? Could we afford them? No, not at all. Do you think that Celtic are building a legacy under Brendan Rodgers? And I don't just mean on the park. Building the legacy of winning champions, 
winning trebles, making sure that we're the most successful dominant club still in Scotland. I think that the real legacy that Brendan is building is the fact that he's putting in a proper structure that's going to make sure that we have a conveyor belt of youngsters in the years to come coming into the first team. John Kennedy yesterday spoke about conversations that are taking place. Welcome back to pre-season. Welcome back to the brand new look for the one Celtic fans view. Do you like the new, new look or the new thumbnail? I do try to change things up every season because there is a lot of competition out there. There's probably more Celtic podcasts than any other team on the planet. And I, and don't mean that, and I don't say that by a joke. There probably is. So there's a lot of competition out there. I always try and keep things freshen things up. That will be the new look for the 24-25 season. And on that note, have a fantastic day, Celtic fans, wherever you are, all around the world. <laughs>